Hey guys, it's Mr. Crayfish and welcome to another command block tutorial. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create the vending machine. Now, if you haven't seen the main video on my channel right now, um, go check it out. I'll put a card up on the screen right now. It's where I do a bit of a showcase of the vending machine here, a bit more in depth um, on it. So check that out before you continue on this tutorial if you haven't seen it. But yeah, this is the vending machine here. Um, you can buy items or you just put the emeralds down into the bottom below there. I'm going to be showing you guys how to build this now. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually build the vending machine structure. So you can design this however you like. So I'm just going to get out some oak logs and some oak stairs. Let's also get out a an item frame. So you're going to need one of those and then also a glass pane of your choice. I'm just going to get the uh, regular one. Uh, but essentially we're going to create a two high pillar like this on each side. Uh, we also need a, a, a hopper. So we're just going to place that hopper down in the bottom there. Place that upside down stair here. Come around the back, block there. Stairs facing backwards like that. Item frame. Place one glass pane into the item frame. I'll explain later why we do that. Glass pane here. On top, we're just going to create two stairs like this. And then oak log in the center there. And finally, we're just going to place some buttons on either side here. So we can cycle through all the items. But there we go. There's the base structure of the vending machine. Now, we actually need to add some armor stands to this machine here so we have arrows saying to go left to go right but then also we need to show the price here so to start this off we'll just go ahead get a block and temporarily place it under the button here we're going to start by using a command here called summon then we were going to do armor stand summon it at the block we just placed there so you make sure you look at it then just press tab three times and then we need to give it some custom uh, data tags here so we're going to have no gravity is true, custom name is going to be two uh, arrows pointing towards the left. We then also need to enable the custom name, so we do custom name visible, 1B. Then let's just go ahead and let's just do this now, so if we actually just do that, break that block. As you can see, we've just got an armor stand there with the arrows above its head. Now, we actually need to position this correctly. So, we're not going to make it invisible yet. We're going to position this um, correctly first. So, as you can see, we do need to move it a little bit closer to the button here. Now, we're going to take note of the direction we are looking at. So, we're looking at east, and that is positive x. So, we know we need to move it in a positive x direction. So we're going to be adding 0.8 to that direction, so we're specifically adding 0.8 to the x-axis. So let's go to the coordinate here, and then let's add 0.8. So we're in negative, so we have to kind of take it away from that. Then if we go ahead and enter that now, it's a lot closer to the um, vending machine now. And now we also need to lower it, so we're going to go maybe... Uh, we'll take 0.75 off the Y coordinate, so this will now become 65.25, and that was too low. I don't think no gravity was working there. Ah, oh, yeah, I spelt it wrong. No gravity. That's a little low. Let's add a little bit more on there. Maybe bump this up to 65.4. That looks perfect. So now that we've uh, positioned it correctly, what we can do now is we'll destroy this and add the invisible property. So invisible 1B. And then there we go. Now we're going to put this onto the other side and it's very simple. All we've got to do is change around the name here to um, two right arrows and then add 2 onto, hold up here. So we need to move it in this direction over this way, and that is positive Z. So we need to add two, two block positions to the Z coordinate, so 
uh, let's change this around again and then add two block positions to the Z here so that's 505 and there we go and then lastly we've got to add an armor stand which will be displayed for the price so we're going to look at this hopper down here and then we're going to go ahead and summon uh, armor stand and then at that block position we're going to again add the no gravity property and then custom name we'll just do a placeholder at the moment just ten dollars and then make it visible and then uh, it will make it a little bit lower so it's not covering up the price so we can just go ahead and destroy it like that let's move a little bit lower so maybe 0.2 off the y-axis here so this will be 64.8 that looks perfect so now that we've set up or oh, actually we're not done yet we need to put the invisible property on and I probably spelled it wrong in visible there we go so now that it is all set up we can actually start getting onto the command blocks now let's give ourselves a command block And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to start by defining the items that are going to be in the vending machine. Um, so let's go ahead and you can build this wherever you want. I'm just going to be building it on the surface here, but you'd probably want to maybe put this underground or something like that. But what we're going to do is basically place a command block here. Actually, we need to face it the other way around. And this is where we're going to start defining our items. This is basically going to be an array of items that we're going to be using in the vending machine here. So uh, what we do is get a wooden pressure plate out here. We're going to pop that there. So what this command block is going to do is it's going to change the item in the item frame here. So we might make this an apple. So what we're going to do is get the coordinates of the item frame here so if we just look at this glass pane and then uh, jolt down those coordinates uh, where it says looking at so negative 614, 67 and 504 uh, let's just write them down quickly we'll come back here right open up this command block and then what we're going to do is forge slash entity data then at entity and then type equals um, item frame uh, and then type in the coordinates so x equals negative 614 y equals 67 z equals 504 and then radius of 1 then we're going to change the item in the item frame here so we do a data tag type in item here colon and then specify the item inside of here so ID equals Minecraft Apple and then I think do we have to give it a count I might not have to I think that's it so go ahead and press done and if we actually step on this here go back to there and it is not an apple <laughs> okay I think I put my type wrong here so Let's go ahead and that should actually be item underscore frame. And then there we go. So it's now updated and <laughs> I've still got my cheese texture in. Let me just get that out real quickly. So there we go. It is an apple. Now, along with setting the item, we also need to update the price there. So we're going to create a new command block here. Uh, we don't really need to make it conditional we just need to make it a chain because we kind of want all these to run regardless of if this I mean this should all this should set the um, 
item always, so we don't really need to make it conditional. So what we need to do here is update that item, that item for uh, the armor stand that's down here. So we're going to take note of the coordinates of this hopper here. So it's negative six on four, sixty-five. It's actually just two coordinates down from the ones we just noted before. So let's take that into consideration. So it's going to be entity data negative 614, then two coordinates down, so 65, then 504. Uh, and that is wrong. Why am I doing that? <laughs> At entity type equals armor stand and then put in those coordinates x equals negative 6, 614, y equals 65 and then z equals 504, radius equals 1 and then update the data here so custom name and then essentially the price of this item so we might make it two dollars so let's do that now now if we run over this go back here and it hasn't updated it. Ah, right, hold up. Always active. My bad. So that should have updated it now. There we go. So now it says two dollars there. Now we also need to place a hopper on top. So we're going to get a hopper and two emeralds. So two emeralds is the price of the item here. Place that on top there, then place the emeralds into the hopper. That's so we can check if the emeralds in the hopper there match this one. If so, then we're going to give the player that item. Then what we're going to do is leave a space here, then place a, another command block like that. This here is where we're actually going to summon the item for the player. So we're going to note down this block coordinate here. So uh, that is negative. 615, 66, and 504. So let's just write that down. These are kind of common um, coordinates you're going to be using a lot during this because while you're creating this, you're going to have to like re enter a lot of stuff. So, what we're going to do here is actually summon an item. So, summon item at negative 615. 66, 504, and then let's specify the item here. So this is going to be the apple. So ID Minecraft apple, and then the count. Um, you could specify something higher. Higher maybe will give the uh, player two apples every time they purchase an item. So there we go. That is pretty much um, one of the array L uh, items. So what you've got to do now is create more of these this is where it gets a little like you can pretty much create as much as you want so we're going to copy this um, so make sure you hold control here and then middle click or pick the block so you also get the mbt data with it and then we're going to place as many items as we want so it's one two three four five six seven do that with that one as well same here Oops, I don't think I uh I don't think I picked blocked that one correctly. I'll just do it again. Then this one here. Now you need to change all these to whatever items that you like. So I might change this one to I don't know stick. This one can be I don't know log. And, then, and so on. Now I'm just going to cut this down just because this is a tutorial and I don't want to make it too long. So we're just going to stick to three items here. So this one here was a stick. And then we're going to give the player, I don't know, 16 of them. Uh, we'll set the price here to maybe a dollar just for the sticks because they're quite cheap, obviously. And let's pop in 16 emeralds into the hopper here. Then for this log here, might make the price, I don't know, 10 emeralds. Um, did I put six? 
Why did I put 16 into there? That was supposed to be 1. Here we've got to change that to log. And then we might give the player, I don't know, 64 logs. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, unfair trade here. Uh, and let's put 10 emeralds into this hopper. So now this is all set up. Oh, and plus the uh, pressure plates as well. So let's just test this out real quickly. This should change it to a log. Yep, it did for $10. This one should change it to the stick for $1. Yep, so everything seems to be set up so far. So that is going to end off this first part of this tutorial. Next part, we're going to actually handle the button clicks. So whenever we press right, we're going to scroll through all the items. And then we're also going to be handling purchasing. So that next tutorial should be coming out within a couple of days. So make sure you stick around for that. But if you enjoy these command block tutorials, make sure you go ahead, snap that like button. If you have any ideas for command block tutorials, I'd love to know. Leave them in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all my newest tutorials. And I will see you guys for the next part. Bye. Didn't want to break it.